And we are back on WGN TV Political Report. So you heard from the incumbent, and now we shift to the other side of the race for the 8th Congressional District. Chris Dargis is the Republican Party's nominee. He joins me this morning to talk about his campaign. Chris, thanks for coming in. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So to introduce you to people, your background, you're a Navy guy, a nuclear engineer, former chief marketing officer at Cars.com. What don't we know about you? Well, um... Uh, you, you really laid out a lot of the key points. You know, being in the Navy was an honor, it was an honor and privilege to wear the uniform and serve the country. And and uh, that ethos of service is something I've taken with me through my whole life. It's the, uh, you know, that need to put people ahead of politics, that need to put service to others ahead of, you know, your own career, your own personal interest. But in terms of a little tidbit that someone might not know, my uh, grandparents and mother emigrated here as refugees from Ukraine. I'm actually a first generation American sitting here and, and happy to be here. And interesting, a question will be coming up about that in just Perfect. a little bit. Let's talk Talk about the economy uh, economy because that is number one in people's minds you blame the COVID-19 relief stimulus and related spending on the Biden administration that it hasn't worked but as you know masses of industries people were out of work was it wrong for the government to step in with that kind of financial support in the form of PPEs and other kinds of support well my concern with the Biden relief plan is that it came just four months after we already passed a trillion dollar relief package for the American people towards the end of the pandemic and there were numerous political commentators including President Obama's own uh, Treasury Secretary Larry Summers, who said that if we do this, it's going to spark inflation. And that's exactly what we've seen. That's crushing American budgets. It's hurting our senior citizens on fixed incomes. We have to choose between food and medicine. Helping the American people, when the government is shutting down businesses, when the government is putting people out of work, it's entirely appropriate for the government to be helping people. And I'm glad that we did that. But by the time we got to 2021, it was time to let this economy grow again and not uh, engage in this wasteful spending that is now hurting the American people. So the 8th District, which you seek to represent, as a result of that funding, there were 1,000 business relief loans, uh, millions of dollars to schools to get them reopened, six million to help the Palat uh, Palatine upgrade its emergency response equipment. So a lot of good things happen with those funds. Well, when I walk around the district, I'm not hearing from anybody that says, uh, that is telling me that they're feeling the benefit of the $4 trillion in spending the Biden administration has kicked in over the last two years. We are feeling the pain at the pump from their energy policy. We're feeling the pain in our pocketbooks from inflation, whether it's gas, groceries, rent, school supplies. But, uh, you know, again, the, the PPP loans, all the stuff that was done during the previous administration was was wonderful to do and we spent trillions of dollars to help the American people but it was time to move past that really target our support and get the economy growing again so inflation as it is now is impacting everybody but d d what do you how do you address the fact that it is a global Democrats want people to know it's a global phenomenon yeah they, they want everybody to know that but the reason we have inflation here in the United States is because of the policies we pass in the United States the war on energy has raised our energy prices which is not only causing pain at the pump pain when we heat and cool our homes but it's also a major contributor to inflation it's the reckless spending of the Democrats in Washington, D.C. that has sparked inflation. And again, you don't have to take my word for it. This is President Obama's own Treasury Secretary who is, who is saying this. So, um, you know, there have been uh, recessions overseas before. There's been inflation in other countries before, but that has not impacted the United States. Our problems here are due to the problems coming out of Washington. One of your solutions is get energy production moving in the U.S. again. Your opponent said, look, this isn't a problem of pipelines. This is a problem of refining. And leases are out there. There could be more going on that needs to happen. Well, we shut down a pipeline, we cost American jobs, and we basically sent a signal to the world that we're no longer serious about our energy independence. We have been slow walking or not approving uh, gas and oil leases to the rate where we're, I think, I think the approval rate is about 2% of what we've seen in previous administrations, both Democrat and Republican. Now, when you do that, you basically shut off long-term investment, which is needed in this industry, and you, and you uh, hurt uh, the American people in their pocketbook. And by the way, oil and gas is a... Uh, helps the American people in the short term, but it has it does not hurt climate change. The fracking boom has actually been a benefit to carbon emissions in this country for those who are concerned about that, which I am, because it has lowered carbon emissions in this country for the last 15 years because clean natural gas has displaced dirtier uh, fuel sources like coal. So it's actually a net benefit to America. We get energy independence, we can support our allies, our bills are lower, and we're lowering carbon emissions. Republicans say the Inflation Reduction Act just didn't do any good for people, but as you know, part of the provisions <laughs> include capping insulin costs Mm -hmm. uh, for people on Medicare. Um, would you have voted for that act if you were in Congress at that time? And what is your view about the prescription benefits that are in there, such as on insulin? Well, I would absolutely vote for a, a standalone bill that has a cap on insulin costs. Our seniors are suffering enough. We need to make sure that health care in this country is taken care of. But with that inflation, that's one incredibly small part of that bill. It, it spent hundreds of billion do, uh, billions of dollars on special interest giveaways and subsidies for the rich. It raised taxes on the American people. It doubled the size of the IRS to squeeze $20 billion 
billion dollars more out of the poor and middle class just next year alone. It's uh, it's a misplaced priorities and it's misplaced spending, and unfortunately, it's adding fuel to the fire of inflation. Let me touch on Ukraine. As you mentioned, you are the child of many Ukrainian yeah. immigrants. Um, Kevin McCarthy, if he becomes speaker, had said, and he told this to the Washington Post, essentially, Congress may end the uh, assistance to Ukraine. What's your view on it, given your personal personal connection? Well, I've spoken with Kevin McCarthy, and what he said was that it wouldn't be a blank check, that there would be oversight of the dollars to be spent, and I think that's entirely appropriate. We need to make sure that when we're aiding another country, that those dollars are being spent wisely. But I support aid to Ukraine, and, and Speaker or future Speaker McCarthy does as well. We've authorized $40 billion to support Ukraine. We spent a little bit, just under half of that, and we should continue to spend. The problem is, or continue to support Ukraine, I should say, not because it's in Ukraine's interest, which it is, but because it's in America's interest. There are tyrants around the globe in China, in uh, North Korea, in Iran who are watching to see what we do. And if we don't stand up for the, against this unchecked aggression, we're going to see more global conflict and it's going to make uh, this world even more unstable than it already is. Let me just touch on January 6. You have said that you support guilty facing justice. Um, what is your view of all of the investigations go are going on now regarding the, the former president? Problematic or does justice play out? Well, we need to let justice play out, first and, first and foremost with regards to law enforcement. Anybody who is damaging property, who is rioting, who is attacking law enforcement needs to be held accountable for their actions, and I'm glad to see that they are. In terms of the committee, uh, we need to investigate what happened. We need to know why it happened and how it happened. Uh, there are some political aspects. I mean, we're just now, after a year and a half, the committee seems to have found out who the president was at that time and issued a subpoena. These are things that could have been done long ago to find out what exactly happened. But uh, we should continue to investigate, and we should continue to hold those accountable who uh, damaged uh, uh, our democracy on that day. I got to touch on guns and violence. Of course, it's so important to people. Uh, you put blame for the violence on, uh, on uh, calls to defund the police. Many Democrats would say that is just not what we're <coughs> calling for. We're calling about increasing funding for mental health and other issues. What is your view on what needs to be done, and do you support a uh, federal ban on assault weapons? Well, what I, where I place the blame for crime is on criminals. Uh, criminals are uh, running unchecked in our society right now. Uh, prosecutors like Kim Fox refuse to do their job. They turn our jail cells into a revolving door, letting criminals who the police are doing their job. They're arresting criminals, but then they're right back out on the street. And it's the laws and our political leadership that are hamstringing our law enforcement right now. Calls to defund the police, but also the laws that are being passed that put uh, more burden on the police than they do on the criminals. I have family members who are part of the Chicago Police Department. They tell me stories of criminals fleeing the police, holding their cell phones out the window, laughing, filming the police chasing them because one, they know that they likely won't be caught because the police will have to break off pursuit due to the laws that have been passed. But two, even if they are caught, they know they'll be right back out on the street again. I do want to get your views on abortion. You've called for balance. Uh, the question is, what do you say to women who say, look, I don't want politicians making this decision? And your opponent says that you don't support uh, the uh, exceptions for abortion. What is your view? Well, my opponent says a lot of things. He, uh, he's, he doesn't have much to say about inflation or gas prices or crime because he's either voted for or supported all of the policies that are hurting the American people right now. So he comes up with false attacks. I would never, ever vote for anything that doesn't include an exception for rape or for incest or the life of the mother or a fetal abnormality. But full stop, I won't vote for, I will vote no on any abortion legislation in the federal Congress because the Supreme Court has decided that this is a state issue. That's exactly where it should be for two reasons. One, doctors and women and everyone who is involved needs to have a voice and the state legislature is the best place for it. And the reason it's best at the state level is because the people of Illinois don't need the people of Texas or Florida telling us what our laws should be. Chris Dargis, so little time, so many issues. Thanks for coming in. I Happy to be here. It. Thank you. Coming up next on WGN TV Political Report. Where